morning. My name is Melanie Bagsby. Welcome to Aimwell Missionary Baptist Church, located in Mobile, Alabama. I would like to welcome you to the Well Experience. We have an awesome pastor by the name of Pastor Trey Wolfer. And here at the Well, we live well, we love well, and we lead well. I hope that you're ready for an awesome service. Sit back and enjoy the word. Remember, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Zephaniah, the second chapter, first through the seventh verse. It was coming from the New International Version. Gather together yourselves together, you shameful nation. Before the decree take effect and the day passes like wind blown chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord wrath comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all oh, you humble in the land. You who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. Gaza will be abandoned and Ashlon left in ruins. At midday Ashdod will be empty and Eknon uprooted. Woe to you who live in this, by the sea, you Catherineite people. The word of the Lord is against you, Canaan, Canaan, land of the Philistine. He said, I will destroy you and none will be left. The land by the sea will become pastors having wells for shepherds and pans for flock. That land will belong to the remnant of the people of Judah. There they will find pastors. In the evening they will lie down in the houses of Ashkelon. The Lord their God will care for them and restore their fortunes. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. I ask you to pray. Lord, we thank you. And even for that scripture, Lord. Yes, Lord. You've given it to us so we can understand the time is now to seek you and to repent. Lord, we know as a nation we are failing you. And so we ask you right now, Lord, to come into the hearts of man that even our nation will repent and call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for giving us a mind to be out here today. Thank you for each and every one, Lord. Lord, we know that there's others on their way, Lord, so we ask you to give them traveling grace. Lord, we just ask you to have mercy upon us today, Lord. Lord, we ask you to cover our young people. Lord, they're struggling and they have so many different avenues. Lord, we let them know that it's time to seek ye first and everything that they need shall be added. And we call upon your name, Lord, that you would do it right now we ask you right now to touch the sick, Lord. Lord, we don't know their problem, but you are a healer, Lord. We know it because you healed us, Lord. And Lord, we know that there's some evil still dealing with COVID, Lord. We ask you, Lord, right now to heal as only you can. Lord, we know that there's bereaved families everywhere. Lord, touch, Lord. Even, even now, Lord, they know only what you can do. And Lord, you're still a loving God. Lord, you never make a mistake and you give us strength. Yes. The strength to surpass everything that anything that comes our way. Lord, and I thank you today. And Lord, we would be remiss, Lord, to not say thank you, Jesus, for the last Sunday service, Lord, for those who went down in the water, Lord, that those who believed and repented and called on you. Lord, we thank you for each and every one and we look forward, Lord, of their race with you, Lord, and we look forward to others coming, Lord, for Lord, it's time is now that get in a hurry to serve you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the grace and the mercy. Lord, we thank you for the pastor who has a plan to help us to serve and to teach us to serve. Lord, we ask you to bless him today with the word that will help us to keep running to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for you are forgiving, God. 
You are loving God. You are merciful God. You are God all by yourself, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all you've done for you. We thank you for what you've done for anger and God through the years. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, just come into this place. We cry, holy, holy, holy. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all you're going to do. And then, Lord, one day, when it's yours to call in our sins, we ask you to give us a home over in glory land. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, come on, ain't we? Put them blessed hands together this morning. How many of y'all know God got a blessing with your name on it? Come on now, don't fool me. How many of y'all walking in favor this morning? Makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. Hold your head up, put a smile on your face. This is another test, it won't last always. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Get ready. Get ready. For your miracle. For your miracle. Get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. For your blessing. Oh, get ready. Get ready. Oh, you've been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be alright. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. So get ready, get ready. For your blessing, For your blessing. Get ready, get ready. For your miracle, For your miracle. For your blessing, get ready. Get ready. For your miracle, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hey. How many of you know God got a blessing with your name on it? Come on, repeat after me, y'all. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. That's good. That's good. Come on. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on, church family. Let me hear you. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Whoa, 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 whoa. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on, y'all. Let's go with it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name.
more, y'all. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, y'all sound good. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, 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 oh. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yeah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Here we go, here we go, here we go. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. 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 It's never enough And what do you say When your loved ones go away They leave you all alone So alone Tell me what do you do When you give in your all And it seems like you can Just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how. Don't you dare give up. You just 
after you've done all you can. 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 After you've gone through your hurt. Yeah. 
ask somebody for me. I just said, you don't know. You don't know what he's done for me. Wish I had somebody that felt like your pastor today. Said in spite of the tears, gave me. showed up the day said he gave me the victory yeah. Oh. Yeah. look at somebody say I got the victory got now that was the wrong neighbor they would have shouted if you would have said to the right person look say I got the victory got tell them say it may not feel like it now it may not look like it now but I got the victory, I got the victory. because you don't wait until the game is over to start shouting but you start shouting in the third quarter you shouting in the forefront and you can say I love you I love him 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 say I really love the about his say, I, I didn't come to church because everything I may look good but things hadn't been that good yeah, yeah, break down, break down. but your testimony said I love you some of y'all went to the doctor this week and you had a prognosis and you ain't told nobody about it you've been waiting to let that thing out said I That's why you can't judge people's praise because you don't know what kind of hell people have caught this week. So some people came to church because it was the last thing they could do. You can say, I love you. I love you. Said, I love you.
tell you how I know. Tell them because I'm still here. Wish I had some real people in here to say sometimes I have some weeks where I don't feel like I can make it to Friday. But somehow, some way, look at somebody and say, he made a way. When I see Alva Joe's up in here standing tall and proud, he made a way. <laughs> Grab your Bibles this morning. Good to see Roy Means and Kim Means in church today with us today. Come on, let's give God praise for them. Grab your Bibles this morning. It feels like church in here now, don't it? You know, sometimes we need worship like that to break out so we can lay down the burdens we've been holding on to. Do I have a witness in here? And what you don't want to happen today is something that happened on Monday to stop you from receiving the word that God has for you today. Do I have a witness in here? I wish somebody would claim this for you. I'm not going to let what happened to me this week stop me from receiving what God has for me this week. Do I have a witness in here? Grab your Bibles, John chapter 21. Lord, speak, we need to hear. Amen. John chapter 21. Thank you, praise team, for flowing the way you always do. Reach us to me. Oh. 
Somebody had his strength reaching to you right now. John chapter 21, verses 18 through 23. I'm reading from the New Century Version of the Bible, but as long as your Bible says Bible, you're in the right book. I'm a, I'm, I'm last, on, on first Sunday, I talked through the subject of better at minding your business. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12. Today, I want to lean in again to that subject from a different text but the same idea essentially. Uh, John chapter 21 verses 18 to, through 23. And he says, Jesus says these words. He said, I tell you the truth when you were younger, talking to Peter, you tied your own belt and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you put out your hands and someone else will tie you and take you where you don't want to go. In parentheses it says, Jesus said this to show how Peter would die to give God glory. Then Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Peter turned and saw that follower of Jesus, love, who was walking behind him. This was the same follower who had leaned against Jesus' breast at the supper and said, Lord, who will turn against you? And when Peter saw him behind them, he asked Jesus, Lord, what about him? And Jesus answers, if I want him to live until I come back, that is not your business. He says, Peter, if I want him to live until I come back and return, Peter, don't worry, I got something for you to do. That ain't none of your business. He says, you follow me. So a story spread among the followers of the disciples that this one, one disciple would not die, but Jesus did not say he would not die. He, says if, he, said, he said, only said, if I want him to live until I come back, that is not your business. Again, I want to lean in again from that subject this morning, better at minding your business. You need a second title today. Whenever you hear this again, it's going to be called The Ministry of Minding Your Business. Look at your neighbor and help me preach this. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Y'all ain't talking back. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Please. Please. I need you to put some Luther on it. Please, please mind your business. Please mind your, your business. In this section of John 21, the author allows us to eavesdrop on a private conversation that is very important between Jesus and the resurrected Jesus. A resurrected Jesus and Peter. Jesus has just completed his triple question interrogation and Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? But Peter is grieved because there is a distinction in these three questions that he asks Peter about his love because in the first question, Mary Taylor, you'll discover that Jesus used a lot as the word agape for love, which speaks of unconditional love. But in questions two and three, Barbara Brown, he uses the, the word for love, which is phileo, which is a conditional kind of love. When Jesus, what Jesus is really questioning here, brothers and sisters, is not necessarily Peter's love. But what Jesus is really questioning is Peter's loyalty. That is because Jesus understands love can exist without loyalty. But you do understand it is loyalty that dictates and determines the depth that a person's love has for you. That means, child of God, that shallow loyalty equals shallow love. Deep loyalty equals deep love. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, true loyalty is not represented in what people say in your face. But true loyalty is demon. They deny you behind your back. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, this was an indictment for the fact that obviously the love that Jesus offered to Peter was not the same love and loyalty that Peter offered to Jesus. This must be why our, our grandparents used to sing with pride, can't nobody. 
do me like Jesus. That simply means, y'all, that as bad, as good as Jesus is to us, all of us, if we're honest, can testify that we're not that good to him. Jesus is putting to perspective Peter's true loyalty. And can I tell you, Jesus' question indicate this one truth that we all can identify with. That the most painful part of having to question a person's loyalty is, are not the questions you have to ask. But the truly painful part in, in, in having to question a person's loyalty is that they've given you a reason to ask the questions. And perhaps what is what's weighing on Peter in this text is the fact that he realizes that he's done something and because he denied Jesus, now Jesus has some doubts about him. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, you can identify with the people whose loyalty you had to question. It wasn't the questions you asked, was it? But it was the fact that you had to ask them, wish I had somebody in the first place. And even while Peter is having this conversation, you wouldn't believe it. He's talking to the resurrected Jesus. He's gotten up from the grave, but even Jesus has, has this same problem that no matter how close people are to you, sometimes they don't act as wise as they're supposed to. Because Jesus is in the midst of telling Peter how God was going to get glory out of his life through him being crucified like Jesus. But look at P Peter's response. Peter says, Lord, what about him? Isn't that our problem sometimes, brothers and sisters? Is that as God is calling us to do things, we ain't concerned with the business that he's given us. But somehow, I did come to preach this morning. Somebody can testify that you can testify that your biggest problem is not you, but you're so busy worried about them. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? He's worried about John's business. But you do understand this is not the first time we've seen the disciples act like this, is it, Dick? Because on one occasion, the, the disciples were arguing among themselves to see who would be the greatest. And the Bible says there was some strong tension about them trying to determine who would be the greatest in Jesus' sight. There was another occasion where the mother of James and John were trying to petition, giving Jesus a sad petition, saying, Jesus, please let my son sit on your left or your right hand side. Even in this text, brothers and sisters, Peter seems to be in a secret competition with John trying to make sure that John doesn't get any more than him. Is that not our problem? is that you can't be happy, you can't find peace because your miserable self is in secret competition who has, with people who has nothing to do with the business that God has given you. Do I have a witness in here? Isn't it strange to be so close to Jesus but yet so far from his understanding? Can I tell you, child of God, that the word for us today is to simply mind our business because you know what the problem is Javonda the problem is this y'all because Jesus Jesus is trying to test and to test his disciples because they are struggling with the loyalty to Jesus's agenda and their loyalty to their own ambition and can I tell you brothers and sisters if we're going to win the war of minding our business we cannot be concerned with our own ambitions. We cannot be concerned with what we want out of life. But we've got to be focused on what God wants for us. Because can I tell you, brothers and sisters, when I look at my life, I don't want anything that he doesn't want from me. <laughs> because there's some people in here that can testify that everything that glitters is not go. I wish I had some real people in here that said, Pastor, I don't even know what's best for me. But I serve a God who knows what's best for me can I tell you brothers and sisters Jesus puts this idea to bed he's saying Peter don't get it twisted I love you but you still need to mind your business can I tell you brothers and sisters he says I don't I don't bless you Peter because of what I'm doing for him but I'm blessing you because of what I see in in you Maybe ain't well the next fifth Sunday that we have this month. Maybe we need to start a new ministry. And that's called the ministry of minding. And you don't got to worry about a leader. I'm going to lead the ministry. We meet every Monday through Friday and we're going to make sure that we don't waste time. I wish I had some real people to, 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 to be worried about other people's business. Here's the punchline, friends, since y'all acting like that today. Busyness in other people's business is neither profitable or productive. 
That means, brothers and sisters, that means that, 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 that what you have to look at your life and decide that when you're overly concerned with other people's business, you consume your peace. It controls the purpose that God has for you and it contradicts God's plan for your life. That simply means the more you're in their business, the more you live in your own personal bitterness. So the question is, Pastor Trey, if we're going to join the ministry of minding our business, if we're going to become better at minding our business, what is this text tailored to teach us? Can I give it to you today? I said, can I give it to you today? Y'all acting funny today. I said, can I give it to you today? It is, it is, it is. Number one, if you're going to become better at minding your business, number one, you have to first of all concentrate on your assignment. Look at somebody and say concentrate on your assignment. Y'all didn't say it, right? I need you to put some emphasis on that word, your. It says concentrate on your. Come on, look at him and point him at your. Your assignment. Jesus says to Peter, when you were young, when you were younger, you did what you wanted to do. But now that you're older, you're not going to be able to do what you want to do, Peter. Tells Peter, you're going to die. You're going to have to go through some stuff. And Peter, you got to understand this. I still need you to follow me. The setting here, brothers and sisters, Jesus and Peter are walking along the seashore. And Peter had already denied Jesus three times. In John 18, so Jesus decided in spite of his bad choices, he would give him another chance. Jesus asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter kept saying, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, okay, since you said yes, let me tell you what you're saying yes to, Peter. He makes this prediction of Peter's assignment because he prefaces by saying, most assuredly, just to let Peter know, I don't want you to forget this. He says, you know what, when you were younger, you did everything you wanted to do. You went to the mall, you did everything you wanted to do. But now I got other plans for you, Peter. And just want you to know your life will no longer be about you and no, no longer be about what you want. It's going to be about what I want from you. And, when, and, and the Bible says, brothers and sisters, that Jesus tells him, Peter, God's going to get glory out of your life. But the way he's going to do it, he's going to let you be crucified just like me. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's a hard conversation, isn't it? Can I tell you, I'm so glad that God does not have these kinds of conversations before he calls us. Because if you're honest, if you knew then, I wish I had some real people in here. If you knew then what you know now, here's the honest, you never would have married them. Okay, y'all gonna act like that? If you knew then what you, come on, I wish I had some real people in this house. What I know now, I never would have took the job. Come on, where are my real people at? Do I have a witness in here? Because the truth is, if God told you everything that you was going to have to go through it, you would tell yet God yes, but you would say, God, heavens, no. Do I have a witness in here? Because the truth is, brothers and sisters, if God told you to hell, if God told you to storm, you wouldn't want what God had for you. But he says to Peter, Peter, I still need you to say yes. So history records, brothers and sisters, that some, some 34, 35 years, Harold, after this very conversation, Peter is crucified on a cross. Which means that whatever God told him was going to happen, it happened. And he says, Peter, I know this looks bad. I know it's going to cost you some, Cody. He said, I know it's going to hurt you like crazy, but I still need you to concentrate on this assignment. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes the call of God is going to cost you something. I hate to tell you this. I know we love blessings and we love God blessing and favoring us. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes when God calls you to things, it's going to cost you something. Jesus tells Peter up front, it's going to cost you a lot. It's going to cost you your life. He said, but in spite of that, I still demand that in spite of the cost, you still say yes. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But it's, you're struggling with the yes that you gave God. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, the yes is still worth it. And I know you got tears and I know you got some sleepless night. I know you're struggling with that doctor visit. But can I tell you, you still got to tell him yes. 
Because can I tell you, God does not offer cheap calls. Which means this, if you ever want God to give you anything that's worth something, it's going to cost you something. And if you're honest, there's something, anything that is worth anything to you would never cost you nothing. That means that God doesn't have anything cheap to offer. That if you want these blessings, if you want this elevation, Jesus says it's going to cost you. And don't worry about it, Peter. I'm not offering discounts today. Which means you got to pay full price and, and take the struggle and the success and decide, God, my yes is still worth it no matter how I feel, no matter how many sleepless nights I have. Do I have a witness in here? That's why he says, if any man follow me, let him take up his cross. First he says, deny how you feel. Deny what kind of mood you in. <laughs> deny whether you feel like doing it or not. He says, you still got to say yes. And I know somebody can't shout right there. Because you're saying, Pastor, wait a minute. This is a high cost that Peter has to, has, has to pay. He has to pay with his life. But you do understand. That when you look at other people's life, what you're going through may not match what they are going through. But can I tell you that sometimes God allows us to go through more because he has more in store for us. And can I tell you, no other disciple that walked with Jesus experienced the type of ministerial success that Peter did. No other disciple had to, had to have that level of exposure in the Bible. And so that Timmy Timmy tells you this, Peter. Peter, I know you mad that they ain't going through what you're going through. But can I tell you, people, you, Peter, you got a place to shout because what God has for you is more than the person that you may be jealous of. Do I have a witness in here? And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, we want the prize but we don't want to pay the price but can I tell you don't you won't you stop praying that prayer that God should enlarge your territory because can I tell you when he enlarges your territory the bigger the territory the bigger the hell the bigger the territory the bigger the enemies do I have a witness in here look at somebody and say I can handle everything look at somebody and say there are no discounts I don't know you're asking, Pastor, well, how can God have Peter to concentrate on his assignment knowing how much it's going to cost him? This is how he can concentrate on it because, brothers and sisters, while some of us read this text and we see a death prediction, we, we see that he's going to die on a cross. We read right past something and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He says, when you were younger, you did what you wanted to do. But then he says this phrase, Vansia, he says, and when you get old. I see y'all sleepy. Y'all ain't got your coffee yet. I got it. Say it one more time. He says, when you were younger, you did whatever you wanted to do. Peter, but when you get old. Sandra, they still sleep. I'm, I'm, I don't know what it is. I got to say it one more time. I read it real slow. He says, when, they were, when you were younger, you did what you wanted to do. But when you get, now what scholars have suggested is that Peter was middle aged in this place. That simply means brothers and sisters, what Jesus was saying to him, said Peter you're going to die. But you're not going to die until you complete the assignment that I have for you. So that means whatever happens from this day to your death day is not going to be enough to, to stop you from completing the assignment that I have for you. That means that no matter what they say, they can't stifle you. They can't stagnate you. They can't stop you because what God has for me. I wish I had somebody say it is for me. That simply means, brothers and sisters, you don't have God's permission to die until your purpose has been fulfilled. Do I have a witness in here? Look at somebody and say, I ain't dying until I'm done. I ain't dying until God has, has done what he's going to do for me. Is there anybody here that can testify I can face my haters? I can face the storms because what God has for me. Look at somebody and say, I know it's for me. And can I tell you how you know you still got some 
time left because he woke you up this morning. And if he woke you up this morning, I don't care how old you may be or how young you may be, how messed up you may be, God says, I still got something for you. Do I have a witness in here? Would you look at somebody and say, he still got something for you? That must be why Paul says, what can separate us from the love of God? Hell no. Now that, that's, 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 that's the Trayon translation. Can hell do it? No. Can lies do it? No. Can witches do it? I said witches now. I know I got some people that's struggling. I don't want y'all to go to the beginning of the alphabet and re replace that W with another letter. No, I said witches. But since it was on your mind anyway, including them too, they can't stop what God is doing. In your life. I don't know why y'all acting offended. Act like you ain't said it this week. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, I don't care who they are or who they think they are. You ain't going to die. You ain't going to be finished until God is finished with your life. So that means that supervisor on your job, they can't stop you. That lie that they keep putting out around about you, it ain't going to stop you. Because God has something more in store for you. Can I give you something else? Can I give you something else? Here it is, brothers and sisters. Not only if you're going to become better, must you concentrate on your assignment, but here's the second thing. You also must understand that you can't compare your assignment. Look at somebody and say, don't compare. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean to say, don't compare your assignment. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, Jesus says, Peter, you're going to be crucified. And Jesus, Jesus talking to him, telling him what's going to happen to him. But then he says this, y'all. Peter says, but Jesus, I know what you're going to do for me. But tell me, Jesus, what you're going to do for John. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. Why we struggle with peace, struggle with joy. Because while Jesus is trying to give you your own business, you keep worried about what he's doing. I wish I had some real people in other people's business. And Peter was upset because the assignment was going to cost him everything. And he wanted to know, Sandra, how much is it going to cost John for his assignment? But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, you can't compare the cost that you have with others. Can I tell you, comparing the cost of your assignment to others is dangerous. Because Peter has a problem, doesn't he? His problem is that John's assignment would not cost him what his assignment would cost him. Peter, you can't compare the cost to John. Because neither one of you are going to pay the price that Jesus was going to pay for his assignment. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's why I've learned not to be jealous of people. You look at people and you see how they're blessed and you see how they drive and you see how they live and you say, man, I want that life. And see, the problem with this is, is this, y'all. We want the stage, but we can't handle the storms. Wish I had some real people in here. And you up here mad and jealous about how, how her and her boo look so happy on Facebook, but you don't know the hell that her and her boo has gone through. So before you get jealous, before you get mad, before you walk around here smacking your teeth, looking at somebody's shoes saying, I wish I had a pair of shoes, you don't know how much it costs. And the problem is you may want what they have, but you may not want to pay the bill. Do I have a witness in here? Look at somebody and say, don't get jealous. That is why Carl Jung said this one wise phrase. He says, the shoe that fits one does not fit the other. Which means this child of God, you may want to wear their shoes. But before you desire their shoes, 
Understand this, you can't judge a person based on their shoes until you've walked in their shoes for a long time. Do I have a witness in here? Essentially, Charles, essentially what, what, what Peter is saying is Jesus, you ain't being fair. He said, you ain't being fair with me. Jesus, don't you know I'm your man? Don't you know I love you? So how in the world are you going to give me more hell than you give him? Have you ever been there? When you looked at other people's life, you said, God, it seems like I'm going through more. And I'm paying my tithes. I'm going through more. And I'm coming to church. I'm going through more than this person right here. And I think it's, I think it's funny, Vancey, that we only want to talk about God's fairness on one side, don't we? Oh, I don't hear us talking about God's uh, fairness when we're talking about favor ain't fair. Oh, we don't mind God being fair then, do we? Because we say, God, you, you fair when you give me what I want to have. But, but my problem is we only want to talk about how unfair God is when he's not giving us what we want to have. Do I have a witness in here? And what Peter is arguing here is that, Jesus, you are being unfair towards me. And Peter testified back in, in John 13 that he loved the God. But that, back in, in John 18, he got tested. But in chapter 21, he got his test results. And the test results said, Peter, I know you said you love me. But the test that I just gave you three times, you just failed the test. And so, Peter, while you're boasting about your faithfulness, understand you still failed. And if Jesus was being fair, Peter, you failed the test three times. But somehow, in spite of your failures, I somehow have given you a future that says no matter how many times you messed up, he said, I still got something else for you to do. Do I have a witness in here? And just in case you're tempted to want to compare your assignment to other people, can I tell you, I want you to think about all the times you failed, all the times you've let God down, but the fact that he woke you up this morning is because God knows how to give you another chance. Can I tell you, I don't want God to be fair with me because if God was fair with me, I wouldn't be up here preaching today. But is there anybody here that can shout for the unfairness of God? Can I tell you what the unfairness of God is? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me with my nasty self, shall follow me with my messed up self, follow me with my cussing self. Is there hickey hickey anybody here that can give God praise that he gave you another chance? Look at somebody and say, I'm shouting for another chance. Tell them you can shout for a new car, but I'm shouting that in spite of myself, he gave me. Somebody ought to take about five seconds and give God another chance praise right there. Said that he gave me another chance. Do I have a witness in here? And if Peter was honest, Peter would recognize that you failed so many times. But Peter, in spite of your failure, God still gave you a future. Can I tell you why you ought to have a good reason to shout no matter what they sing and no matter who's standing behind this desk, you ought to be able to reflect on the fact that you know you failed at some stuff, but in spite of your failures, God still gave you a future. And that simply means, Peter, I don't care what you did in chapter 18, your bad chapter was not your last chapter. Do I have a witness in here? And I don't know why y'all ain't shouting right now, acting like all of your chapters been good chapters. I wish I had some real people said, no, nah, Pastor, I got to tell the truth. All of my chapters had been good chapters. I've had some nasty chapters. I've had some naughty chapters. I wish I had some real. What about real people? Said, my chapters look bad, Pastor. But I showed up to church today because my nasty chapter, my naughty chapter, didn't stop God from giving me a next chapter. Do I have a witness in here? Look at somebody and say, I got another chapter. I know you don't like me, but I got another chapter. I know what you heard about me, but I got another.
Look at somebody and say, I know, I know you heard what I did. Tell them, I know you saw me coming out of that house. But look at somebody and say, I still got another chapter, though. Some of y'all sitting there, let me see, can I come down your street? Because you're saying, Pastor, what? Terry, they're saying, what was the next chapter for Peter? Because you do understand, 50 days from now, at the time of this text, they was going to have the day of Pentecost. Y'all don't know when to get happy. I thought y'all shout on the Bible. So, Sasha, uh, 50 days from now, they're going to have Pentecost. And Jesus had a conversation with Peter, and it went like this. Peter, I'm making out the program for Pentecost. I got somebody down for the scripture. I got somebody down for the prayer. I even got somebody to lead worship. But Peter, I got one spot that's missing. I ain't got nobody to bring the message. Y'all don't know when to get happy. He says, Peter, I know what you did in that last chapter. But I still got something bigger than your mess up. Do I have a witness in here? And I got to use my sanctified imagination. I believe that conversation between Jesus and Peter went like this. He said, Jesus said, Peter, I got something bigger than you. He, and Peter said, you know what, God, I know, but you must have forgotten, Jesus, what I did in that last chapter. You must have forgotten how I messed up in the last chapter. Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, I didn't forget it, but I did forgive it, though. And some of y'all ought to give God praise that, that he may not have forgotten what you did, but you can show no shout that he did forgive it. Do I have, look at somebody and say, my testimony is T-G-I-F. I thank God I've been forgiven. And he is, is there anybody here that's got a forgiving shout that God forgave you in spite of what you did? That is why Peter was tempted to say, Jesus, I'm not worthy for this. Because I'm talking to somebody, you don't feel like you're worthy for God to use you. Can I tell you, Jesus' response to Peter is this, no, you are not worthy, but I am. And that simply means this, you all. Last chapter. You still got another chapter that's in you. Do I have a witness in here? And I came to preach to somebody that I don't care what you got on you today. You can have weed in your pocket, but you got another chapter in you. I don't care if you went down to Metro last week. You still got another chapter in you. I know you could be still struggling with drugs, but you still got another chapter in you. I know you messed up your marriage, but you still got another chapter to you. Is there anybody here that can give God another chapter praise? Not because you had some good chapters, but you can shout that I got another. Look at somebody and say, I got another chapter. Another chapter. Just in case you thought you let God down. Whoever told you you were the one holding God up? Look at somebody and say, I got another chapter in me. Care what you heard. I got another. Look at somebody and say, I got another chapter. Got another chapter in me. Because you do understand, brothers and sisters, comparing yourself to others is a back doorway of being jealous. A back doorway. Always comparing what they got. Always worried about what they driving. Some of y'all can't shout in here today because you looked at somebody's new outfit. Wish I had some real people in here. Worried about what they got on. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, don't you get lost in jealousy because the proverb writer, writer, writer said the best one. He says, envy or jealousy rottens your bones. Look at your neighbor and help me preach it and say, hating ain't healthy. It'll make you sick. And maybe that's the reason why you can't shout today because with your sick self, you mad about what somebody else has and mad about what somebody else God is doing in somebody's life. But can I tell you, I learned not to be jealous of other people because if God is blessing my neighbor, 
I wish I had somebody. If God is blessing my neighbor, that must mean that God is in the 251. That must mean that God is in the neighborhood. And, whether, and what you should do, if he's blessing somebody two houses down, what you ought to do, not get jealous, but you ought to find some joy. Because if he's three houses down, that means I may be next in line for my miracle. And can I tell you what I do when I when I see other people being blessed? Can I tell you what I do when I see other people driving new cars? I sing like the Clark sisters. I'm looking for a miracle. I can expect the impossible. I can feel the intangible. I can see the invisible. The sky is the limit for what I can have. And so when you when you be tempted to be jealous, when you see what God is doing in your life, here's the part you got to do. Just believe and receive it. Don't get jealous of the new job they got. Just believe and receive it. Don't get jealous of those shoes you see them wearing. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Hey, hey. Look at somebody and say, don't get jealous, but find some joy. Look at some. As a matter of fact, let's take about 10 seconds and we're going to have a shout. But we ain't shouting for what God is doing for us. But we're going to shout for what he's doing for our neighbor. Come on, let's take about 10 seconds and give God praise for what he's doing. It sounds like some of y'all are yelling. Lift up your voice and say, God, I thank you for what you're doing. Look at somebody and say, I ain't jealous of you. Can I have a few more minutes? I got one more thing to say. Can I get one more family? I'm talking to y'all. Can I get one? Can I, I got have time for one more thing? Y'all show? Y'all ain't gonna walk out? I got you. Hit it. Here's the third thing. Hit it. Hit it. For some of y'all that say I don't preach like this at, unless I go out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I know y'all said it last week. Oh, he don't never preach like that at home. Yes, I do. Uh, because if you're going to become better, not only must you concentrate on your assignment, not only must you realize that you can't compare your assignment. But here's the third and final thing, Brooke. Here it is. If you're going to become better, and minding your business, you got to be committed to your assignment. Did you catch the progression? Concentrate. Don't compare. But choose to be committed to your assignment. Jesus answered him, if I want him to live until I come back. He ain't so good. I'm sorry, that, that, that was good. That is not your business. But here's what he says, y'all. He says, Peter, instead of you worrying about them, instead of you focusing on what I'm doing in their life, Peter, follow me. As a matter of fact, in, in the text, he actually puts a personal pronoun. He says, you follow me. Can I tell you, he says, not only do I need you to mind your business, but I need you to understand that there is some business that I have for you and you can't fulfill my business focusing on somebody else's business he says follow follow me I knew y'all was coming to church I had to do my homework and I discovered Mel that that word follow me is in the present tense I've been your pastor long enough so you know that the present tense of any word means it is a continuous action which he's saying this he says Peter on good days, follow me. But Peter, on bad days, still follow me. Peter, when the sun is shining, follow me. But Peter, when the storms of life are raging, follow me. 
Peter, when you having a good year, follow me. But Peter, even when you having a bad year, wish I had somebody follow me. Peter, when you having a good month, follow me. But Peter, when you having a bad month, I still need you to follow me. Peter, when you're worshiping me for what I just did, I need you to follow me. But when you're weeping at night, I still need you to follow me. Because you don't follow me, Peter, because of what I'm doing for you. But you follow me because of how good I've been to you. So even if I'm having a bad day, I can say I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. I've had some hills to climb. But when I look around and think things over, I can still find a good reason to follow Jesus no matter what kind of day I'm having. Look at somebody and say, follow him. I know why y'all ain't shout. I know why y'all ain't shout. Because you're saying, Pastor, I don't mind following Jesus. But can he at least take me places I want to go? That's why you ain't shout. Because you're mad because you're saying, Jesus, I'm your man. I'm your boo boo, Lord. So, Lord. I'm your girl. So if you're going to lead me, can you take me where I want to go? The psalmist David seems to lean in, Roy, on how we need to follow him. In Psalm 23, it says, the Lord is. Wish I had a Bible reader. My shepherd. He said, I shall. Not a want. He wish I had somebody that knew the song. Makes me lie down and lead me beside. He restores my. Now, we have no problem following the shepherd in verses 1 through 3. Because he's given us what we need. He's taking us to green pastures. And he's leading us behind quiet streams. But our problem starts in verse 4. Because in verse 4, he says, after I've made you lay down, after I take you by quiet water, here's what verse 4 says, yea, though you walk. I wish I had somebody that knew the Bible. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That means, brothers and sisters, that the same shepherd you were trusting when everything was good is the same shepherd that you got to follow when things are looking bad. Do I have a witness in here? Look at somebody and say, don't walk away from him in the valley. <laughs> because you got to understand, when you can walk, notice what he says, yea, though I walk. Which means sometimes even when you're following God, you going to get to set the pace that you're going through something. Sometimes you can't run through stuff, but other times you just got to walk through stuff. Do I have a witness? As a matter of fact, somebody showed up to church today. You ain't running from it, but you just walking through that valley. <laughs> Is there anybody here said, Pastor, I ain't running here today. I'm just walking through. And the reason why you can walk through the valley, because you know that while you're walking through the valley, Paulette, you ain't walking by yourself. Because my Bible says he walks with me. And he talks with me. And tells me that I'm his own. Somebody say, let him walk with you. But the good news is, is this, Roy, the good news is this, Kim, that while he's walking you through the valley, don't trip in the valley because verse 5 says he's already prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That means that not only is he walking with you, but he's already gone ahead of you and worked out some stuff for you. Look at somebody and say, I'm following that shepherd. Because while he's helping me through it, he's also setting me up for something greater. Do I have a witness in here? Is there anybody here that made up in your mind? that you're going to mind your business. Do I have a witness in here? And I know it's getting hard. I know it's getting hard on you. But can I tell you, still got to follow Jesus. Would you hear touch about five people and say, follow Jesus? Go ahead and help me preach. Tell them, tell them follow Jesus. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm following Jesus no matter what I got to go through. Y'all don't mind if I preach it like I feel it, do you? Look at your neighbor and say, nay, I 
feel some Baptist on me, Mary Taylor. Nay, said neighbor, I decided to make Jesus my choice. The road has been rough, and the going has been mighty tough, and the hills may, hard, may be hard to climb, but I started out a long time ago. There's, there's, but there is no doubt that's in my mind. I, 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 that I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Look at somebody and say, just follow him. I can hear my granddaddy here. And if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior is come, be not dismayed. When men don't believe you, he'll understand and say, well done. Do I have a witness in here? Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of the life, I, 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 the battle is won. Carrying the staff and the cross of redemption, he'll understand and say, well done. Is there anybody here that's made up in your mind? that I'm going to trust in the Lord. Do I have a witness in here? And when you feel like giving up, you got to reach back from one of those old hymns and say a charge to keep. I have a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, to fit it for the sight, to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. And may it all now may it all, may it all, my powers to engage, to do my master's will. I don't know why y'all sitting like that, but is there anybody here that made up in your mind that I'm going to trust in the Lord? Yes, I'm going to trust, trust in the Lord. Is there anybody here that can stand up on your feet and wave your hands and say, I will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus because I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Is there anybody here? Is, is there anybody here that came to church because you're following Jesus no matter what? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Look at somebody and say neighbor. Look at somebody and say neighbor. I don't care what it is it's going through but said neighbor you got to follow Jesus no matter where he is because this is what the psalm says the psalm says surely goodness and mercy is gonna follow me at the club it's going to follow me while I'm high. It's going to follow me everywhere I go. Say yes. Say yes. Look at somebody and say, I got somebody that's following me. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. He's following me. And if he's following me, if he's got grace, if he's got grace and mercy following me, the least I can do. Is follow. Follow. Follow him. Can I tell y'all? I don't care what you think you did. You got another chapter in you. Church folk will make you think because you messed up. That's it. No. You know what I discovered about sin? Church folk are more sensitive to sin than God is. They're more sensitive, ain't they? Don't let them find out something about you. They're ready to put you off the praise team.
ready to put you out. Don't let them see you down at Kazula. Ooh. Ooh. I thought she was a Christian. You know what get on my nerve about church folk, even when it comes to preachers? Most people will leave churches because a pastor messed up. But then that pastor walked through, through your mess up. And the problem with church, y'all, is that we keep acting like all of us, Lorna, they keep acting like all of us are perfect. I ain't perfect. Somebody was asking me, how do you handle those in the LGBTQ community? What you mean? For God so loved the world. That he gave. It's only begotten son. It ain't my place to judge nobody. Because it's by the grace and mercy that he didn't judge me. I wish I had some real. What are my real people that say I can't judge nobody? Yeah. Can't judge you. What I look like. What I look like judging you, sending you to hell. That's the problem with church. We sending everybody to hell. And if everybody going to hell, who in the world is going to heaven? If everybody going to hell, you know how empty heaven going to be? But we don't go to hell because of sin. We go to hell because we don't know the sun. Josh, y'all missed that. You don't, go to, you don't go to hell because you, you sin. Listen, if you getting to heaven was based on how much you sin, you wouldn't even have access to it in the first place. But you go to hell because you don't know Jesus. This next few moments, that's why I don't want any walking, unless you walk into the front. This is the most important part of today. Yes, I prepared, y'all can hear it. But the reason why we're here is that somebody can get to know the Son. If you need to know Christ today, I want you to come. I know. You're saying, Pastor, I had a bad chapel. So? Pastor, I'm high now. So? Pastor, I got it in the car. So? Don't let that police car out front fool y'all. That's my head of security. I'm going to keep him in here so y'all can get to the car. <laughs> Y'all so crazy. Uh, but listen, listen, y'all. I don't care what you got, man. Listen, I'm telling you, ain't no chapter bad enough that God can't heal you, that he can't give you another chance. So as we stand today, as we stand, as we stand today, as we stand today, listen, I need you to come. I need you to come. I need you to come today. I need you to come today. You need to know Christ today. I need you to come. I need you to come today. Said right now, everybody, come on. Today, everybody, just come. Said there's nothing better, everybody, everybody. There's nothing. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Let me ask you this one question: Were you blessed today? Were you blessed by the word? Were you blessed by the worship that went forth today? Listen, my name is Pastor Trey Woolfolk. Uh, I'm the senior pastor of the Angel Missionary Baptist Church place where we love well, live well, and lead well because we are the well. Listen, you worship with us today that while you weren't in person today, you did worship with us on our online campus, which is our Aim Well Anywhere campus. Uh, and the premise of that campus is because it's online, you can worship with Aim Well from anywhere in the world. And I hope you were blessed. I really, really hope some song that was sung, some sermonic moment spoke to your heart and I'm grateful for whatever reason you chose to click in tap in with us today thank you for doing that and on behalf of me and my church I want to thank you for what you did just by being a part of our worship experience listen brothers and sisters uh, though you're on our Aimwell Anywhere platform, you already know and you should know that you can receive Jesus anywhere. You don't have to be in church to receive him. You can be in the drive through and receive him. You can be uh, on, the, on, on the clock, so to speak. Uh, but listen, I just want you to know you can, you can 
uh, have Jesus. You can literally experience Jesus, the love of Jesus, no matter where you are. He says, for God so loved the world. That means anywhere. <laughs> he, he, his love is anywhere and everywhere you are. So listen, if you want to give your life to Christ today, maybe you're saying, Pastor Trey, I'm already, I'm not saved yet. Uh, I, I, I've been thinking about it, but I'm trying to wait till I get my stuff together. Listen, there's no such thing as you getting you together. Because if you could get you together, they would, then God would have never sent his son to die for your sins. So listen, don't wait for that. that, that that's something that, that may not ever happen. But I promise you this, Jesus can help you. Help you get your life back on track. Keep your life on track. Are y'all with me here? Come on, come on, give your life to Christ today. If you want to give your life to Christ today, there's a QR code at the bottom of your screen. I encourage you, please, ma'am, please, sir, listen, use that QR code, put your smart device on it, take it to our website, go ahead and, 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 and input that. We've already had members to join on our Aimwell Anywhere campus uh, online. We have members in three or four different states already represented. Listen, you can be an additional person. Maybe you're living in Mobile and you're saying, Pastor Trey, I'm just not ready to come in the building. That's fine, that's cool. Listen, you can be a part of Aimwell Anywhere. Still be a member, we would love to be your Aimwell Anywhere family. I would love to be your Aimwell Anywhere pastor. Listen, I want you to join today. Maybe you're saying, Pastor Trey, I'm already saved. I need to get that church. Whatever it is, listen, let's go ahead and get that church home worked out. You need a place to worship, come on. Worship with us. I would love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your church family. Listen, come on. I, I'm so excited that this moment could be just the moment that God has been designing for you to come back and even join the church. Come on, let's do this now. Come on, let's do it now. Listen, brothers and sisters, while you're doing that, while you're doing it, of course, you're going to join the church. You're going to give it that price. It's QR code. It works for both. And whatever it is, again, we've had people to utilize this code already. So listen, go ahead. It Maybe today is your day. Let's join, give your life to Christ, join the church. Listen, there's no greater place in the world to worship and be a part of than the Amwell Missionary Baptist Church, a place where we love well, live well, lead well, because we are the well. Come on, join. Come on, give your life to Christ today. We would love to help you facilitate that process. One of the two, give your life to Christ or join the church. Listen, brothers and sisters, you can do that. QR code at the bottom of the screen. Now, as we get ready to go, I want to thank you again for your time because you chose to worship with us during these moments. I want you to know that we value the fact that you clicked in, tapped in to be with us today. Listen, I'm going to pray and then we're going to go. And I thank you again for your patience and your, your attentiveness. Thank you for what you did. Come on, let's pray together. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for my brother and my sister. Maybe have clicked in, tapped in today. We pray that something was said today that will speak to their hearts like only you can. We love and praise you and honor you in your son Jesus' name. We do pray. Everybody say amen. That family, thank you again for tuning in with us. I love you, and I see you when I see you. Peace. God praise for my brother. Amen. Okay, Harold, Harold, would you help him, help him get over? Let's thank God for our brother as he's, he's leaving us. Thank him. Let's give God praise for him. All right, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. You may be seated today. Were you blessed today? Yeah. Were you blessed? Uh, listen, we got to go. I got to get you out. Uh, I'm about five minutes away over my time. Is that Vanika's? That's your daddy? Uncle. Vanika joined our church earlier this year, and that's her uncle that just joined today. Come on, let's give God praise for her. Yeah. All right, listen. Hey, man, listen. I'm, I'm about, okay, 12 minutes over my time. Uh, Y'all good, though, right? All right, give me, give me about five minutes and 15 seconds, and I'll let you go. All right? Now, listen, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand if you need an offering envelope. You need one, Prince? You paying tithes? All right, my man. All right, cool. Charles, he said he paying tithes. I don't know what allowance you're giving him, but give him some more. 
Yeah. He said, he, Prince said, I need to tie them up. I'm praying. You got to train them up. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Train them up. Uh, he, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm with it, friend. <laughs> Listen, um, I want to I wanna thank you. Listen, wasn't last Sunday a beautiful day for us? It was a beautiful day, right? Do y'all know we had nearly 300 people in this building last Sunday? We, had, we set a record for in 15, 20 years that we haven't had that many people. Let's give God praise for what he did last week. And then on top of that, 50, 60 of you all went home, got a good nap, and went over to Mount Sinai with your pastor. Some of y'all didn't get no nap. And I want to commend y'all for two things. Roy, they didn't fall asleep. And I know you had heard that message a week earlier. Thank y'all for shouting like you didn't hear it the week earlier. I'm so proud of y'all. Cause you know, Alvin, you know what ain't well do. You know how y'all do? Y'all, I know it was a little different than the one y'all heard. But you know sometimes time, how y'all try to, try to finish my sentences when I'm preaching? I'm so glad y'all didn't give it away. All right, all right. Now, I'm, I'm, y'all gonna hear this again too. This is, I feel like the Lord spoke today. Didn't he speak today? So, y'all gonna hear this again. Now, when next time you hear this, act like you ain't heard it. All right, I gotta go somewhere next month. Thank you, Stuart Memorial. I think we gotta go to Stuart Memorial on the 14th. I'll let y'all know. Yeah, down the street, down the street. Down, I don't know, uh, by seven again. It ain't down by the bay though. So sick of y'all. Down the bay. Ain't no water over there by that church. Y'all up here talking. Come out down by the bay. Down the bay. <laughs> All right, so here, here's, here's the thing. Now, um, Harvest Fest is coming up on October 31st at 5.30 to 7.30. Right, 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, we're going to have events and activities in every room upstairs. The food will be downstairs. Your child can wear, grandchild can wear whatever they want. Don't have your child dressed up like Moses. I told you that last week. Let them kids be kids. Amen, somebody. Let them dress up and let them do what they want. We're going to have plenty of games. We're going to have some activities for the adults in here. We have a, a spirited game or whatever they be playing in here that be real loud. Uh, so the, we're going to have something for the entire family. It's going to be indoors. So it's going to be safe. Amen. And we're going to have some candy. What I need your help, I need you to bring any child that's in your neighborhood. But also I need you to make sure that you go to the store and buy some good candy. Not worth as original, not peppermint Altoids, no. Get them some Snickers, some Skittles. All right? Don't you bring no butterscotch up in here telling us I'm going to bless the kids. No, we don't want that. Say that for fifth Sunday, all right? All right? Y'all hear me? Now, y'all laughing, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, don't 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 come up here with no words original. No, we, we get get a kid some candy that they eat. Laffy taffy, something. Amen. So listen, make sure y'all do that. Make sure we do that. We want to make sure that we make that event as well. Now, uh, I think did we do the the uh, the package for thing? The written they in there. Okay, good. All right. So here's the last thing. I'm going off the top of my head. Uh, I didn't download my announcements today. But listen, let me tell y'all. Um, now, I have talked to you all about Seed Sunday. I remember we did Seed Sunday, first Sunday in June. And there are a lot of you who told me about testimonies of when you sowed that seed that Sunday within less than a few days, God gave it back to you double. And what I want to do, I want to hear those testimonies because we need to let people know that there is a blessing in being generous. Amen, somebody. And so in your packet today, in your packet today, we're going to do two things. Maybe you may be a little camera shy because we're going to record it. Uh, you just want to write down how God bless you. That's fine. That's what's in your packet today. You can take some time out the service and, and write it, or you can bring it back next Sunday. Or you can sign up with Sister Javonda Knight, who's, who's in the back. Uh, or, you know, because she's in the back, attendance, to our new members, you can sign up with Brother Mixon and get him your name. Because what we want to do, we want to continue to encourage generosity. I told you all that I, I was going to so seeds in this church and, and 30 individuals I'm glad to tell you I have superseded that this week uh, I, I've been sowing seeds I think I'm about 35 or 36 now uh, but I ain't tired yet because that's a blessing because everything I sowed into people God has given it right back to me 
And so I, I don't, I'm preaching to you what, I, what I, I'm preaching to you what I know. Is there anybody here that said it's more blessed to give than it is receive? So listen, listen, I'm sowing seeds. I'm not done. If I, if I message you, say, send me your cash up, just be obedient and let me bless you. All right. Because I want to tell you, I don't want to stop my blessings. Because I believe God has something in store when we give generously, of course. And so if you have a, a Seed Sunday testimony, please sign up today. Or you can write it down so we can make sure we read it. Because I want people to know some testimonies that are right next to them of how God can bless you when you bless other people. Do I have a witness in here? All right. Here we go. Raise those gifts up. Am I forgetting some? Oh, I got you. Man, thank y'all. All right. Put the, putting it down for one second. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Do we have any guests today that are visiting with us today? We have any guests wave at us. Wave, wave. We got some guests. We got some guests. We got some guests. Amen. Listen, I want you to know that you have blessed us because you worship with us, and I want you to hear something. Amen. Well, let's show them how we feel about them visiting today. Yeah. We so glad y'all came. So glad y'all came. And we're so excited that you're here. In a moment, we're going to get you to have you to get your things. We're going to take you to our visitor suite, show you some of that good old Aimwell love because we believe in loving well at the well. Amen. 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 So thank you. Come on, one more time. Let's thank God for our guest today. All right. Now, raise those gifts up. Raise those gifts up. Raise those gifts up. Now. Uh, all right. Oh, got gotcha. you. Thank you. You're doing all right today. Good job. Lift those gifts up and say, Lord, thank you for another opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you've given to me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, front line, y'all raise those baskets up. Raise those baskets up. Front line, raise those baskets up. Y'all can look around. These are the people that are collecting offering today. Make sure that you don't leave without sowing your seed and being a blessing and paying your tithes today. Amen. All of our guests, would you stand? Would you stand? Would you stand? Would you stand? All of our guests today. Would you stand? All of our guests. I'm not going to ask you to say nothing, but you're going to come to my right. Come to my right. Come on, all of our guests today. I said, go and tell it. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all good? Come on. Just come this way. So tell somebody. Tell somebody come on, all of our guests, y'all come. Oh, it's more than y'all that raise your hand. Okay, cool. Come on. Come on, look at all these guests we had today. Tell, tell, tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our guests are here today. Go and tell it, everybody, everybody. Go and tell it. Say, go and tell us. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. All right, here we go. Listen, let's bow our heads. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the privilege to follow you. Help us, God, when we get tired, we get weary, we feel like giving up, to keep following you no matter what kind of day, what kind of month, what kind of year we're having. Because, God, we trust in you. We love you and we praise you and we honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. Listen, do me a favor, family. Do me a favor, family. One of our bap a camp baptism candidates, uh, Mr. Dawson Kelly, was uh, injured uh, in a football game. He played for Baker. I want y'all to be praying for him. He's, he's doing okay, amen. Uh, but they, they, we're going to be praying for his recovery. So when the, he's the grandson of Sister Cody Baker. We want to make sure that we are covering our family. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Listen, I'll see you next week, family. I'll see you Tuesday night. Then I'll see you next week. Come on, section four, section five. God bless you. God bless you. Go and tell it, everybody. Come on. God bless you. Roy and Kim, y'all better not leave for us. I see y'all. Who? Oh, ho, ho, ho. My bad. Y'all stop right there. We wearing pink next Sunday, y'all. Pink. Now, if you ain't got, I ain't saying pink suits. I'm saying we wearing some shade of pink. Sam, shut up, boy. He said, what's this, Sam? All right, we're going to wear pink next Sunday. Come on. Here we go. Go and tell everybody. Go tell somebody. Tell, hey. tell somebody. Tell somebody about Jesus. Yeah. Skip it, Terry. Let's go. Let's go. Go and tell.
Microsoft hit their share button. It is our prayer that you receive the word that God has for you today. Hold on to the word from today and let it take you through the rest of your week. Join us next week for the well experience. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. May your week be amazing and remember that we live well, love well, and lead well at the web. Thank you.